Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at anti-radiation missiles and a little bit of the tactics and strategies both for how to employ them appropriately as well as uh, how to kind of make them a little bit harder to be effective. Anti-radiation missiles are missiles that are typically fired from aircraft, although they don't have to be, as we'll show you in a minute. And the purpose of them is to basically attack enemy radars, uh, preferably fire control radars and not just things like search radars. The way they work is uh, relatively simple. Uh, they have this little thing called a passive radar seeker chilling in the nose. And basically what they try to do is they try to identify a target that's emitting a specific frequency. These are frequency sensitive, by the way. You actually have to pick the right frequency for the right weapon. In command, they make that a little more generic, but um, again, that makes it a little bit easier for you. And basically they're gonna home in on that radar signal. Now there are different generations of these weapons with different effectiveness. And we're going to be taking a look at that today, as well as, like I said, some kind of how you get away with it. First things first, um, anti-radiation missiles require an active radar signal. So if I actually unpause for a second here, what you'll observe is I have several radiations coming from all sorts of different signals. I've got a little tar surface to a radar. This is a target illuminator. We have a regular little search radar, actually a pair of them. We also have a cheese board here, which comes off, you know, the SA-10, or this is actually an SA-20, sorry, which is a very, very scary, scary radar, of course. And they're all emitting all over the place. And naturally, we also have a strange emission coming down there, but we'll deal with that in a little bit later on. So now that we have an emission, we can go ahead and take a shot. So what I'm going to do is start with my lovely, lovely, lovely AGM-45 Shrike here. And uh, when it comes to not good missiles, this one is the champion. When the sucker first came out, basically it was, uh, they took us, if you've actually seen one of these, they're pretty cool here. Uh, let me grab a picture of it real quick. Ah, let go find what happened to that uh, window with my database on it. It's one of those, I probably buried it on another monitor, but that's okay. Let's go get it, AGM-45. This thing sucks. And if you look at it really carefully, you realize it's a Sparrow missile and somebody basically into the head here put a sensitive radar, basically a radar design, not a radar, I'm sorry, basically a sensor designed to pick up radar emissions of a specific band. And basically you tuned it for fire can radars. You tuned it for like all sorts of SA-2, SA-3 radars. And it kind of sucked. Um, what it would do is it would leave the um, rail basically, spin a couple times and then desperately try to get itself close enough to actually do any real damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this weapon in place. Again, everybody is emitting right now. If you had somebody not emitting, we would not be able to fire on them. I can't say that enough. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy Osh right here. I'm going to go ahead and attack this guy. I'm going to go ahead and fire one into this one. And I'm going to go fire one into my dog here over here as well. So I'll go ahead and speed up time just a little bit. He's got to come and ring down. Good old fashioned uh, great intruder here. Gets in range. Here comes the first missile. Second missile. He's going to head back home. So these things are now tracking the electrical signal coming off of this radar. If we had a moving target, these missiles would actually adjust for that and actually move with the target. Target. We can also see over here that our little flat face is just kind of chilling. You know, we've got a pretty good lock on it. Again, it was an emitting radar the whole time. We can see the missiles are streaking across the air here in kind of western Nevada. Looks pretty darn good. We got a radar illuminator, which probably is telling us that that fan song right here is lighting up for the purposes of trying to guide some weapons to try to hit it. And you can actually see these missiles on the way to try to hit that. Uh, probabilities are not good for an early SAM to be able to strike an incoming anti-radiation missile. So let's see what happens. That one, uh, pretty clean. Uh, you can see that one right down the center. I blew that little vehicle to pieces here. This one's coming in here. And looks like it malfunctioned. It did basically nothing. So if we open up real quick, uh, one of the things you're going to observe here is we can actually go through that. First of all, we have a weapon that malfunctioned. It just didn't go off. Um, that's going to happen, especially in the early days. The second one actually did a really surprisingly good job of actually striking the target. As a matter of fact, it did such a good job, it missed it by 31 feet. Uh, 31 feet, fortunately, is more than enough to destroy a vehicle. Now, there's another thing that was going on that was going on very, very subtle. And I don't know if you observed this, but one of the vehicles on the left was actually not illuminating around the clock. As a matter of fact, it was intermittent illumination, which basically complicated things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the standard here. This is a much, much later version on of an anti-radiation missile. And you'll see here how my little dog ear keeps like kind of flashing on and off. It is intentionally only illuminating for a moment and then turning its radar back on to make its challenge a little bit harder to go ahead and guide. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring my handy dandy, uh, this is a phantom here, into range. I'm going to order him to go ahead and fire on my intermittent one as well as my regular one. Again, this would be, you'd never waste them on a search radar basically. But this is a demonstration, so you have to be patient, kind of a thing like that. All right, we're going to fire those two off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the other side real fast. Switch over to red. I'm going to click on this radar right here, and I'm going to shut this radar off. 
Now, remember, we need a active radar signal for the purposes of being able to guide this weapon. So this weapon is pointing where it thought the radar last was. Now, keep in mind, the later models of this are slightly better, this tactic. Meanwhile, this weapon here is uh, zooming in across the sky, trying to sneak up on the dog ear radar right there. And it's going to be interesting, because if it's emitting when the radar shows up, uh-oh, uh-oh, it turned on its radar at the last possible bad time here. Ooh, that's going to be messy. Boom, that thing's gone. Meanwhile, you probably observed that this missile smacked into the side of the mountain here. So if I actually open this up real quick, you'll see that one of my weapons, uh, the one missed my dog ear by about 30 feet, typical. And if you can see this one, it missed by um, almost a nautical mile because the radar was no longer emitting, which meant there's never, ever, ever going to hit. So that's one of the interesting problems they had with these early weapons. Now, the technology got better, and there's kind of two general philosophies as to how they fixed this technology. One, of course, was to add memory to the weapon, which is what you're going to get with the harm missile. The second thing was to get a little creative, and that's called loitering. And we'll take a look at that with the alarm missile. And of course, um, you could just, you know, use artillery and conventional weapons as well. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to order him to attack. I've got two of these. So I'm going to go be ahead and be nice and thorough here. I'm going to attack this one here. I'm going to attack this one here as well. Now, remember, we're only attacking the emitting radar. So if you actually look carefully here, these are all search radars that are emitting, which is an absolute waste of an anti-radiation missile, if you ask me. So we'll switch to this time. We're going to do the same thing we did the first time. We're just going to shut that radar off real quickly. And you're sitting here going, oh, please, uh, that's a lot of work. Yeah, there are other ways to do it, but it works for us. So the two goes after the dog ear. Uh, keep in mind, the dog ear is intermittent. You can see it comes on, comes off. These two have a decent lock. This one's attacking a radar that's no longer turned on. And of course, our lovely little spoon rest there, which is just sort of chilling. Yeah, this is going to be hard. Uh, the dog here did a good job here. So let's see here. And we get a strike on that target, and we get a strike on that target. So as you can see, even though he shut his radar off, the harm is smart enough because it has GPS guidance on board to actually keep going to the target itself and actually strike it. Now you're sitting here going, man, that thing is really good. So obviously, there's no, no defense against a weapon that effective. And the answer is that's simply not correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order my guy to go up north here. And we can see there's a cheese board radar emitting. That usually tells you you're dealing with one of the SA-20s or, you know, I call them S-400s because that's the way I do it. So we're going to go ahead and fire off um, not one, but four of these anti-radiation missiles. Keep in mind, these things are tremendously expensive weapons. And that one exploded. And if you actually do it to God's eye, you can see each one of these weapons are simply getting slapped out of the sky one at a time. And they all got wasted before we got within, oh, about 30 nautical miles of the target. And to be honest, even if I did half that distance on that wouldn't make any difference now i know what you're saying i know what you're saying you're saying well d d d d d what that's not fair how are you supposed to attack this <laughs> welcome to the problem of the modern 21st century here we'll show you a trick in a minute with that so one of the other things I mentioned a moment ago was the idea of a loitering weapon. And one of the cool things they came up with is this lovely alarm missile. And what it does is it's a little bizarre, and uh, employing it is even more bizarre, by the way. Let me show you a really quick trick with it. See how there's about 3,000 feet elevation? Uh, the first thing I would do is order your guy to low altitude. If you keep it up at high altitude, it's not going to work. I will show you what I mean once we get a little lower here. All right, so we're just going to go skirt skirting through our mountains here. I'm trying not to speed up time too, too much here. I don't want to cause any shenanigans. We're a little out of our regular range here. We're within our AS RAM range, which is pretty good. So we're going to fire these things off. Uh, they have a very weird firing mechanism. Do not attack them with conventional direct. Instead, control F1. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire them in front of the targets. And we're basically going to have them with a bearing only launch for the purposes of hanging out. Watch this. So the weapon launches, the weapon launches, here comes another one, here comes another one, here comes another one, and they're all leaving the rail there. And basically what you see here, let me go ahead and send this guy home. Thank you. Actually, I think I fired them at the wrong time, to be honest with you. These weapons are on parachutes. So if you notice, did you see how all of them paused for half a second to do the parachute thing? And then all of a sudden, this one suddenly acquired a missile, a target. So what he's going to do, so you see how they're just sort of hanging out in mid-flight? He actually ran out of energy there. They do sink, but you can see how this one actually stopped flying, waited for this thing to emit, and then he flew in and uh, did his little attack strike there. Uh, we did didn't have a lot of altitude there so unfortunately my little alarms which are literally hanging waiting to reignite uh, unfortunately didn't really get employed perfectly there but you get the concept so of course another solution came out which i thought was a very very creative as well and that is instead of trying to do this with slow weapons it's to repurpose an anti-ship missile and uh, then you get something like the kh-31 now for those of you with the chinese versions a little bit different it's a yj it looks like this this thing is stupid if you take a look at the speed, if I zoom down here to the bottom, you'll see we travel at Mach 348 here, and um, it's <laughs> hilariously effective, except that it's not. Let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, head up north here, and uh, we're going to go attack our little lovely SA-21. Click on this guy. We're going to do fire two. Remember, these things are gigantic. That also means very expensive. Get in range. There they go. 
in the air. They're going up. They're going up. So you can see these guys are going to go ballistic. Uh, they're basically going to travel up pretty high, and then they're going to arc back down. Basically, travel in a straight line, and you can see the first one's already been destroyed. The second one already got destroyed. So that strategy didn't work. So then they said, well, I got a better idea. What if we take the anti-radiation missile and make it proper ballistic? And I'd say, oh... Oh, okay, we can do that as well. So you got this thing called the Hermos 1, which is a fantastic little vehicle. Oh, it's kind of neat because it shoots a ballistic missile with an anti-radiation missile on the nose. So we're going to try this one and see what happens. We're going to go ahead and uh, fire all those. Oh, these are very amusing to watch. And you can see they take a very, very, very long time to get airborne there. And uh, if you want to get an idea of the altitudes we're dealing with here, let me go turn on the 3D view for just a second here. Open this up. Uh, Windows 11 is a new beast. New computer, by the way. So I'm still kind of finding all the goofiness with it. And you can see just how weird my tack view looks. I got to like go back and like change it. But you can see here, um, when we fire this thing, it's going up. <laughs> it gets pretty high. Let's go actually speed up time a little bit here so you can get just an idea of how high up this thing goes. Whoa. I feel sorry for that SA-21. He's looking up at that going, Okay, if uh, you want to play that game, I guess we can try it. And you can also notice they've already captured the seeker in there. You're starting to come back in. Now, the part you probably aren't going to be surprised with is the fact that these are all fireballs re-entering the atmosphere doing, oh, I don't know, Mach 4.15, but Mach 4.15 is pretty slow. So if we actually zoom in here, you can see the SA-21 is like, okay, no problem. And you can see as it just gently slaps um, the first two out of the way. Oh, here was another one. Little explosions a little early, a little late. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. SpaghettiO. That's going to be a problem. Oh, you're going to get it? You're going to get it? Oh, it malfunctioned. Bummer. But you can see there that the fact that that was a fantastic solution to uh, destroying Patriot batteries, for example, knowing the uh, country of origin from that particular tool. And you can see my little guy is not a mini or anything like that. So as you can see, the weapons have evolved significantly, and they also have different platforms that they come from. Now, things get more interesting with this. And of course, I like to pull this one out, and I named this one, of course, the Unfair Aim. And the reason I did this is um, this is the latest generation of the HAR missile. It does one really fun trick, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second here. It has the ability to go ahead and attack things that are not emitting. So for example, a champion guide's eye view here. Let's go ahead and attack this one. You get one of these. And you know, you Mr. Guy who can't decide if he wants to admit or not, you can have one too. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and send them back home. And that's it. So even if these shut off their radars now, it doesn't matter. These particular tools will flip on their automatic radar tools. They're going to identify the target on the ground. And quite interestingly here, you can see that these weapons are actually just going to rip just conventionally right into their targets very cleanly and very, very, very precisely. So you're sitting here going... Okay, so you've done a nice little tour de force as far as anti-radiation missiles. I get the gist. I get the gist. Where are you going with all this? Well, let me show you where I'm going with all this. So what I'm going to do is I reopen my scenario again here. I'm going to grab blue. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my standard here. Now, one of the things people forget about standards, um, forget really about any anti-radiation missile, is the fact they target all radars, including those on ships. Now, keep in mind, you can only attack emitting radars. So if they're only putting on something lame, like they're a little, you know, masked surface radar, that's going to be the only thing you're going to be able to fire on. So I can see here that he's emitting quite a bit here. We have the palm front, the top plate, and the cads. We get the hot flash. So I'm going to click on him and go one, two, and go ahead and fire two standards. Remember, standards are 70s vintage. They're not bad, but um, they're definitely not a harm by any means. And again, you need to be able to reliably target. There they go. Head back home. Now, I did take all the missiles off the new Slovenia here, so they will not return fire. But keep in mind, at any point, he'd start popping up the uh, naval SAN-9s, I think they are. And it's going to come ripping in, ripping in, ripping in. He's going to be tracking them, and they're going to be load firing up the Sea Whiz, probably getting that thing spun up, pointing up in the general direction on it. Ah, we're going to get some uh, last-minute shots. Oh, we got a hit. See that last minute shot with the Sea Whiz. Good shot. So if we go to damage control here, you'll notice that the CADS, or naval radar, the one that we targeted with our weapon, struck. It got damaged. As a matter of fact, we did a little bit of damage here. And you can see we completely snapped off the top plate. That's gone. And we did quite a bit of number to some of the other sensors on board as well. So as you can see, it's actually a valuable weapon against naval targets. But keep in mind, naval targets are they're, they're, they're a whole of the beast. Now, one of the things I said a minute ago was, how are you going to deal with things like our lovely S21, SA? SA-21, S-400, you know the one I'm talking about, complex. And this is a little more complicated because um, we need to come up with a way to get our weapon close or use one of these hee -he SSM ARMs, which I think is awesome. I think everybody needs one of these. Um, my recommended strategy, by the way, is artillery or dumb bombs whenever you're dealing with something this effective. But if you don't have any of those sitting around, that's okay because um, we can cheat with other things. So what I'm going to do is I get everything set up. All right, let's do it. 
So what we have here is we have a lovely FEA18G growler, and it's uh, basically jamming the hardest it can. And following up, we have the unfair anti-radiation missile that is going to fire through the altitude of this target that is now jamming at maximum power. So I'm going to go ahead and lock onto that, fire a couple of these, and we go ahead and send him home as soon as the weapon fires. There's one, there's two. So right now, this poor SA-21 is getting hammered with electronic noise, and these teensy, teensy, tiny little anti-radiation missiles are going to be choo-chooing through all of that noise. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is this particular weapon has done the exact opposite of what I wanted it to do, and it's gone up to maximum altitude before doing its plunge. Now, you can see here it's actually arcing downwards. Now, as it arcs downwards, if you want to imagine this as a three-dimensional problem, it's going to be cutting across my jamming here, and uh, when it cuts across my jamming, it's going to make this a much more interesting problem for these particular weapons to be acquired and attacked. So if we actually switch real quickly over to red here, you can see we actually haven't identified the missiles yet, and we haven't actually identified the jammer yet because we are getting so hopelessly hosed. Now, one of the things I can do here is I can actually flip on the big radar. Uh, this is the one that's uh, basically my fire control radar. This one's got a lot more power, and it's basically cutting through the sky right now, looking, looking, it's looking, it's looking, it's looking, it's searching, it's scanning the sky. Surprise! Uh, we got something. So you can see right here, we have identified those targets. Uh, we've got a range on them of about uh, 12 nautical miles. Most likely we picked them up. No, no, we picked them up with the gravestone. So our big fire control radars all got these guys. Right now, the team is scrambling. They're twisting knobs and they're pressing the button that says Zapush on it. And the weapon is, of course, being deployed. And keep in mind, um, they're firing like crazy mad right now, trying to get these things weapon. And you can even see the weapons themselves were jammed uh, once they did get airborne. And we actually don't even have a nice shot here at the uh, target that is jamming us right now. But you can see with a little bit of saturation, now we could have been a little more successful, especially if you use something that was a little more specialized against something like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and send him home and I'm gonna grab something slightly more specialized. Let's get B-52H real quickly here. Now there's a lot of really, really fun versions of this one. So the long range anti-ship missile is a pretty hilariously fun weapon. But the one I really, 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 really enjoy other than this one, which is hilariously fun to play with, of course, is the penetrator. So let's grab that, shift F1, click on you, and I'm gonna go ahead and say, eh, actually, we could probably fire. Well, let's do all of them. Why not? <laughs> this is called a lot of money coming out of your weapons and getting, getting your money's worth, so to speak. Uh-oh. Am I about to lose one of my aircraft because it got shot down? Uh, you better be 52. Better go home there. Notice my F-18 is like, gotta go. Oh my gosh, I'm about to lose. <laughs> I almost lost my B-52 to a cheap shot. <laughs> Gotta be careful of stuff like that. So anyway, this thing's all been launched. And uh, this is really fun because um, what he's going to do is those are active... Um, actually, my God, I, yeah. So one of the fun things about this weapon here, and you can kind of get a good look at it here, is these are active radio frequency uh, weapons. So even if I highlight all these and press H, uh, this guy's going to be sitting here going, uh, what do we do? And they're going to be sitting there squeezing triggers and pushing buttons, and they're going to be locking onto the jammers, and they're going to be trying to do one of these. And like, even if I press uh, F1 here and hold on Shift and go like that and let go, it's not going to matter because um, the all of the noise coming into this particular view right now is ridiculous. Not to mention my actual lethal weapon which are my Jassims, which are kind of uh, mixed in with the group. They're actually my Jassims are actually back here. Um, these Jassims haven't even been spotted yet. So if you take a look here, this guy basically does a little cha-cha thing uh, like with a big nasty jamming noise right around my lovely little SA-21 here. And meanwhile, my Jassims, which are stealth cruise missiles, by the way, being backed up by my handy dandy little, um, you remember I had the F-18? He's still jamming right now. And of course, um, <laughs> this is so goofy. <laughs> I don't know the but Uh-oh, surprise, Jassims. And of course, he's going to start firing like crazy and the bomb always gets through and you can see my lovely sa 400 sights here my s400 rather is um struck and i don't think i killed it but um, i got about half of them did i get the expensive part i got the cheap part nope didn't get the expensive part so unfortunately my attack still failed these are really sophisticated systems and like i said if you really want to do the deed effectively it's just best to use iron bombs against them so as you've seen, we've seen a wide variety of different anti-radiation missiles. One thing I forgot to mention is the way that this inter um, uses intermediate <laughs> I can't talk today. It's been a long week. Uh, one of the things that it does do to make our life a little bit simpler is I did do some intermittent emission. So if you actually come over here, you can see my little settings here. Basically, it turns on for five, 
goes on for five and then it basically shuts itself off, which makes it kind of nice because it makes it a lot harder. What some people will do is they'll come in here and do like a mission duration two and it makes them even more difficult to target. So it's just kind of one of those neat little sort of tricks that you can utilize if you want to make them a little bit harder to hit. But again, if you're doing a search radar, you could do like one minute and then one minute off. I mean, it's that easy as far as search radar stuff goes. So as you can see, very, very useful tools, very, very useful weapons. Um, obviously, against very modern platforms, it's a little more challenging, but they work really well. Enjoy.